you guys are looking for some motivation to get things done around your house, pop on this video and let's go. Today I'm sharing a weekend prep video. I'm gonna be cooking, prepping some produce. I also cooked a big Easter dinner, so I'm gonna share that with you. Lots of fun things in this weekend prep. I also did some cleaning in the kitchen and I organized my refrigerator, so let's get started. All right, so we are gonna start out on Saturday morning. I am making a quick breakfast for Adam and Connor. I had some English muffins left, so I'm just gonna pop those into the toaster and make a quick breakfast sandwich. I love this microwave egg cooker that I use all the time. I always get a ton of questions about it, but it works really well and it's like seven bucks, so you can't beat that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some ham on here and that egg and some cheese and just put the top on that, wrap this up. Adam had to go uh, run some errands with his dad so he wanted something he could take on the road with him I am gonna start out the day with my greens and my fiber and my vitamins Adam calls this my old lady drink but I have to have it because uh, quite honestly I feel much better when I do so I just take a scoop of the greens powder and I put my water in the fridge the night before just so it can get really cold Next, I'm gonna add my fiber. This actually gives it a really good taste. I think it's like a pineapple flavor. So I'm gonna add a scoop of that in there and then I add my vitamins. So iron, um, I got this on Amazon and it works really well. I have an iron deficiency and also my vitamin D drops. Okay, so it's about 9.30. I just posted my Easter dinner on a budget video, so that is done. I wanted to get that done early, early-ish this morning so that if you guys are going to the store later today, you can um, take some inspiration from that uh, for your Easter dinner shopping. I myself need to figure out what else I'm gonna make for Easter. Um, we have family coming over tomorrow and I know Adam's mom and aunt are going to bring some stuff but and I already have my ham I already have the noodles for the chicken and noodles so I don't think I need to get that much stuff um, Adam is doing something with his dad right now and then him and I are going to uh, go out to lunch later and then I need to get some other stuff for YouTube done I need to get some cleaning done I don't know I feel disorganized right now but I need to definitely make a list but right now I'm actually going to go to um, I have to drop off a paper and sign something at my um, accountant's office for my taxes. So I'm going to do that quick. And actually, before I do that, let's make sure I don't need anything from the grocery store um, because I can do that on the way over there. Also, I'm so excited. Did you guys see my teeth are all in line? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so I just went this past week and got uh, a bracket put on this tooth that was sticking up and like within a day it like moved down into place and so my teeth are so straight I was like staring at them in the mirror this morning and Adam's like what are you doing I'm like look at my teeth they're so straight <laughs> and he's like he's like laughing at me he's like you're really excited about that aren't you I'm like yes I am I'm really excited <laughs> so I don't know I mean I can't wait to get them off but at least they look much more straight straighter and better that straighter yeah I guess okay so Adam and I went up to Davenport and went out for lunch and to run a few errands we went to Meathead so I'm gonna show you guys what we got there but while I was in the car or truck whatever um, I'm in my grocery list for Easter so I'm gonna go ahead and get that stuff in a little bit but I thought I would just show you guys what we got there so this is like a local meat market they have a couple different locations and it's really one of the only places around here where you can get like well not one of the only places but I guess it's one place where you can get like good high quality meats and things like that so um, Adam got a tri-tip I think we're gonna put this in the freezer for now but then he's planning on putting it on the smoker um, I got some beef liver because I'm going to be making some uh, homemade food for Murphy. So I'll show you guys that in an upcoming video. But one of the recipes called for that along with five pounds of ground chuck. So I just went ahead and got it there because we do have some in the freezer, but we're running low. And then I also got Murphy this um, beef sausage treat. So I'm not going to give that to him yet. I'll just put it away. Um, we decided to get some jumbo hot dogs. Adam got some beef and cheddar snack sticks. Um, I got this smoked pepper jack cheese, which is really good. I've had it before and I, I've never found it anywhere um, locally here. So I got some there. Got some malted milk balls. Um, Adam got some 
barbecue sunflower seeds and he also got some venison and pork jalapeno cheddar sausage and then one of the food recipes i have for murphy also calls for venison ground venison so i went ahead and got that from there because this is like hard to find around where i live also we got some barbecue sauce their barbecue sauce is really good adam got some uh, andouille that he wants to use for a recipe i'm not sure what he also got some top sirloin filet and then they make a bunch of different brats like flavored brats so i picked out these chicken uh buffalo chicken pepper jack ones and then adam picked out the jalapeno popper brats which is good because he just put our new grill together last week so we need to get that out on the deck because it's starting to get warm and we had to get a new one because our old one we had it for probably i don't know like six years and the bottom like <laughs> rusted out um so adam ordered this weber grill so we need to get a cover for it but looking forward to grilling once it finally gets warm out again it's still a little bit chilly but hopefully soon okay so i went out and ran some errands i had to drop some stuff off at goodwill and by goodwill there's a car wash so i decided to stop and get my car wash because it desperately needed it and next i went to the grocery store i just needed to get a few items uh, for easter that i needed for some recipes and it was more convenient to uh, go to fairway so i just stopped there and grabbed what i needed Okay, so once I got back from the store, I put everything away and then it was time to start working on dinner. So I'm going to be making some salmon and shrimp and rice and broccoli, but I had this uh, like broccoli slaw or Asian slaw type stuff in the fridge that I wanted to get used up. And so I thought I would make a salad uh, or kind of an, I guess it's more of like a slaw really, but I added some of that in the bowl along with, sh with some Asian sesame dressing that I had on hand and I add a little added a little bit of mirin as well just to kind of give it a more um, tart flavor and this turned out uh, really good but I definitely wanted to make it beforehand so it could sit and let all the flavors meld together this week's weekend prep video is sponsored by Bydeem, and today I'm going to be sharing their intelligent electric food steamer with you guys to make this meal Bydeem has been in the appliance industry for more than 20 years and they have over 1 million products sold. They are dedicated to high quality kitchen appliances that are designed with thoughtfulness and it's their goal to deliver stylish, healthy and convenient cooking experiences to conscious consumers. Their all-in-one intelligent steamer has multiple uses. It allows you to enjoy quick, easy and healthy cooking. It comes with a stainless steel lid and body. It also has a stew pot accessory, which I'm going to show you guys how to make the easiest rice in. It also comes with a drip tray and stainless steel steaming trays and also a ceramic plate. There are tons of different foods that can be steamed. You can steam all kinds of seafood, such as fish, lobster, crab. You can also steam vegetables like spinach, broccoli, tomatoes, and bell peppers. You can also do chicken breast, beef, rice, potatoes, corn, and things like dumplings and egg and cakes. Bydeem's intelligent food steamer is equipped with seven functions which can allow you to steam and slow cook food at the same time and meets many needs in the kitchen. It's also very convenient for living a healthy life and cooking healthy food. The functions included are steaming, slow cooking, a yogurt function. You can also use it as a sterilizer, a thawing machine, and to make baby food. Bydeem's steamer produces steam quickly within approximately just one minute. It does not leak air or spray water and helps keep the nutrition and the freshness of the food. It also has less noise. The drip tray has a special design to allow dripping of the food to not flow back in. It it falls directly in the drip tray, ensuring that the food and the machine stays clean. It's designed so that the steaming tray and the water reservoir are separate, so the flavors of the food don't affect each other when you're steaming two tiers of food. The pot cover also has a curved design, which makes sure that the steam doesn't fall back onto the food as it's cooking. 
So I'm gonna share it with you guys how I used this food steamer to make our dinner on this night, which turned out delicious. So I'm starting out with two cups of rice and I'm just going to wash that off really well. By washing or rinsing your rice, that helps to take the starch um, off of the rice. And so when you cook it, it will be more of a fluffy texture rather than stick together. So I'm just washing that in cold water, dumping it back into a sieve, and then I'll just give that a rinse before I put it in my stew pots. So the ratio of water to rice in the steamer is just one to one, super easy to remember. And honestly, I think this appliance is great for beginner cooks too, because it is so foolproof. You just put one cup of rice and one cup of water into each stew pot, uh, stir it up and it's ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my water to the bottom of the steamer. You actually don't have to take the whole thing apart to add water. There are these little slots on the side that you can kind of flip up and add the water to that. And then there's a water window on the side so that you can kind of see the level. It's super convenient and easy to use. It also has a, a protection function. So when the water level is low, it will prompt you to add more. And when there is no water, it will actually shut down automatically to prevent burning, which I think is really cool. So once the rice is done, I just remove that and set it to the side, and then I'm gonna add the rest of my ingredients to the steamer. So this rice turned out super fluffy and perfectly cooked. I am so stoked to cook more things in this. You guys have to wait and see, because I'm definitely gonna be cooking some dumplings and bao buns and things like that. So just wait, just wait. Um, okay, so I also had this broccolini that I wanted to cook, and so I'm adding this to the bottom steamer Tray. This is already washed and then I'm going to put this uh, sort of collar on that allows you to add another level of steaming which is fantastic. So I put the rack on there. I added my salmon that I seasoned and I'm going to put the lid on that and this just has to steam for about 15 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and let this go for five minutes and then once it has cooked for five minutes I'm going to add my shrimp. If you like mussels, these would also be really good in the steamer, I think. Um, I just, I feel like the possibilities are endless with this and I can't wait to use it more. So I went ahead and added my shrimp and I put the lids back on and then just wait until that is done. And you guys can see that everything is perfectly cooked. That shrimp only took about 10 minutes to cook. They are very small. The steamer also comes with a recipe booklet that has tons of instructions and recipes in it. And it has a guide that shows you how how long to cook everything and here is the broccolini that turned out perfect as well sometimes I feel like I have trouble steaming broccoli over the stove because the temperature isn't constant but I will definitely be using this steamer several times a week to <laughs> make my steamed veggies from now on so here is our completed dinner we had the rice and the broccolini and the salmon and the shrimp and I just garnished it with some green onion Bydeem is also giving my viewers a discount on their order. So I will have a link in the description box below that you guys can go to to check it out. The discount code is GEN13OFF to get 13% off of your order. I hope that you guys take advantage of that. Everything turned out delicious. And like I said, I am looking forward to making so many more things with this. Once again, the code is GEN13OFF to get 13% off your order at Bydeem. The link will be in the description box below. Okay, so after dinner, I wanted to get my hot mess of a fridge cleaned up and I also had some produce that I needed to prep. So here's the before. I'm not gonna actually get this done until tomorrow morning, but I wanted to show you guys the process anyway. So here's some berries that I got at the store. These are just strawberries. I wanted to get those washed up. I can never seem to keep strawberries in my house. After I wash them, my kids will just eat the crap out of them like, like right away. Um, but I normally just rinse those in cold water and vinegar and then I also had some grapes I needed to wash up. These are also super di super dirty. Don't ever not wash your grapes because they are very gross. So normally I put them into uh, my salad spinner and I add some vinegar and I just kind of spray them. It's like, I like to think of it as like a grape washing machine sort of with like an agitator that I use my sprayer for. <laughs> 
I don't know. I'm a nerd. Um, and then after that, I like to fill it back up with cold water just to make sure that everything is rinsed off. And then I put them into a produce keeper. Okay. So mushrooms, I know washing mushrooms is very controversial. I know this because I've showed it before on my channel and I get tons of comments saying, don't soak your mushrooms in water. Well, I think it was Alton Brown who once did a test about washing mushrooms and he really found that the amount of water that mushrooms uh, soak up when they're being washed in water is really insignificant. So I really don't concern myself with that. I personally don't eat mushrooms. I don't like them. Look how dirty the water is. <laughs> but um, I am using them in a couple of different recipes that I'm working on and Adam likes them. So I do occasionally buy them, but I do prefer to wash them off because I just feel like they're much more cleaner that way. But then once I rinse them, I really do make sure that I dry them really well. So I just have a double layer of paper towels here and I add them onto there and then I add some more paper towels to the top and I put them in the fridge um, in a container that I also have paper towels in to keep them as dry as possible because they will turn on you rather quickly uh, if there's any moisture in there. I'm going to be using these to make a, uh, I think one recipe is almond chicken and the other one is like a pork chop stroganoff. So I kind of feel like those of us in the house who don't like mushrooms can just pick them out. I don't know how I ended up with so many dang apples, but I have a ton of them right now. I probably actually need to juice some of them before they go bad, but I had a batch of these that I needed to wash up as well. So I just like to put those in my salad spinner and then I um, cover them up with really cold water and vinegar. And I just like to let them sit for about 10 minutes before I rinse them off. And then I just make sure to dry them really well, which I'll do here in a second, but I'm also cleaning out my produce drawers while I'm at this because it had been a while since I pulled them out of the fridge and just wiped them down. I like to do that every probably six weeks or so because you never know what's hiding in the bottom of there. There might be a rotten cucumber somewhere. <laughs> in your fridge. So uh, for my apples, I just put these out onto a clean towel and make sure I dry them really well. Um, apples, I sometimes store in the fridge. Mostly I store them on the counter, but when I have a plethora of them like this, I do keep some of them in the fridge just to make sure that they don't go bad. And um, I ordered these um, smaller food bins that fit inside my produce drawers, which has really been helping me keep some of my stuff organized. I also had some oranges like cutie oranges. So I threw those in there. I had some grapefruits. So I put those in there. I added my herbs, parsley and cilantro. I had some thyme and some rosemary, some ginger, basically just trying to get everything back into the fridge where it belongs. And then I also had a bag of sugar snap peas, which my kids love to snack on. And I don't believe those are pre-washed. So I wanted to get those washed up as well. Good morning. Happy Easter. I just sent the kids Easter baskets out. It's about 8 45. They're still in bed. All right. So I got to get going on Easter dinner. It's about 9 AM now. And I need to make sure I get everything done because everyone's coming over at noon. The pressure is on. Let's go. I'm just kidding. I don't get really stressed out about this stuff. I know some people do, um, but I just try my best and I did not come up with like a super involved uh, meal this year. So here are my rose rolls. I'm just going to cover those with a tea towel and let them rise. I put them on a sheet tray uh, at room temperature. They take about, I don't know, three to four hours, depending on how warm it is. But if you stick them on top of the stove while the oven's on, they brown or they rise a little bit quicker. Okay. So someone texted me the other day and after I, um, posted my Walmart, uh, Easter video on a budget and they're like, did you cook two Easter dinners? And I'm like, why? Well, yes. Yes, I did, <laughs> but I was definitely okay with that because uh, number one, uh, ham and all the fixing are, fixings are delicious. And number two, um, it's not that difficult to have leftover ham because it freezes really well and I can find so many things to uh, use it with. So on this particular day, I decided to actually do kind of something different with the ham. I found a honey brown sugar glaze online and decided to use that. So I just put my spiral cut ham in a roasting pan on top of a rack. You can't see the rack because it's just in the bottom of the pan, but I'll link this recipe um, down below. It's basically just a cup of brown sugar, or you can also use coconut sugar. 
and then about two thirds of a cup of honey. Uh, my honey was a little bit crystallized, so I had to nuke it in the microwave to get the rest of it to come out of the bottle, but that's fine. And then the juice of one orange. Uh, you could also just use regular orange juice if you had that on hand, but I didn't have any. And then it also calls for Dijon mustard, about two tablespoons of that, which gives it a really great flavor. And then I just whisked that up. It does call for some spices. I went really light on these, so cinnamon, nutmeg and clove it also called for ground ginger i can't find my ground ginger i don't know i need to go through my spice cabinet again and see <laughs> if i can find it but basically i just poured about a cup of that over the ham and then i'll cover this with foil and this will be in the oven for about two two and a half hours and every so often uh, maybe about three times during cooking i just removed the foil and reglazed it okay so now i'm going to start working on my chicken noodles every time i make these i get tons of questions about them. I'm probably just going to do a dedicated video at some point, but to make these, I just start with some chicken broth. So I use the uh, Nor, is it Nor brand chicken bouillon? And I just put eight to 10 cups of water in a uh, a saucepan or a pot rather and I'll boil that for the noodles. While the broth is coming to a boil, I'm going to go ahead and make my green bean casserole. Okay. So I just normally use the uh, green bean casserole recipe on the back of the cream of mushroom can or the back of the French's fried onions can because that's the best in my <laughs> opinion. So I just have a uh, mush cream mushroom soup, some milk, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, some pepper. I'm sorry if you can hear my children in the background. They are being loud <laughs> as I film this voiceover. Um, and then I actually had some leftover green beans from a dinner that we picked up from a local restaurant last week. They had this deal where you can get um, like it was like pecan chicken, mashed potatoes, green beans, salad and a dessert for 40 bucks, which I thought was a really great deal for four people. So we picked that up and I had leftover green beans. And so I thought, hey, why not use them in this green bean casserole? And it turned out perfect. So I added also some uh, French fried onions to that and dumped it into a little casserole dish. And then I'm going to add my uh, French's extra fried onions on the top and that is good to go. So here is my boiling broth. These are Reams noodles. You can get them in the freezer section. I just boil those for about uh, 20 minutes until they're tender and then I'll show you how I finish it. Okay, so these carrots are actually sous vide carrots. They're pre-cooked in this like kind of spicy butter sauce. Where did I get these? I can't remember, maybe Hungry Root or something like that, but they have been sitting in my fridge and I hadn't made them yet, so I thought I would go ahead and cook them up for Easter because, um, hello, we need carrots on Easter because bunnies eat carrots. I don't know, that was my thought anyway. These are super easy to make since they're already cooked. Um, they're already like sous, -vi sous vide. I know that's not a verb, but I use it as a verb anyway. So all you have to do is heat them up in a skillet. Super, super convenient. Okay, so uh, chicken and noodles. So yes, basically you just boil the noodles in the beef or in the chicken broth, and then you can add whatever kind of shredded chicken that you want. I was not trying to be a hero this weekend. So I actually got this um, organic, well, it just happens to be organic, um, canned roast chicken from Thrive Market in my last order. I just thought I would try it and it was really good. I would recommend it. I think sometimes like we shy away from canned meat and things like that, uh, but honestly, it can be really, really helpful. Um, like in a pinch and all it is really is this chicken cooked in water. I think this particular one, there's not even really much salt added to it. So I just put that into a bowl and shredded it up with my fork. And then I will go ahead and add it to the chicken and noodles. You can see how the noodles um, really thicken up that broth. You don't even really have to add any cornstarch to it or anything like that. And then I just stir in the chicken and then you can season it with salt and pepper and boom, you got chicken noodles. You could do it with beef too. Okay, so I really wanted to make lemon meringue pie, but I honestly kind of ran out of time. So um, Adam's mom did bring a cake, so we did have dessert, and then I had some other things to set out as well. So I had some of my little Easter cupcakes that I saved from earlier in the week, and then I had like all of these just little doodads that I got from the store, Easter themed things from Walmart. Uh, there's like some chocolate covered almonds and some 
uh, chocolate covered Oreos and some chocolate covered pretzels. And I don't know, I just tried to make it look really festive and fun because I wanted to get all of this stuff used up. So I just added that all around the board. I'm gonna show you my ham that came out of the oven. That turned out really, really delicious. Highly recommend this particular recipe. It was very uh, moist and not dry at all. Sometimes when you make ham in the oven, it can be dry. I did use my uh, electric carving knife to cut the ham up. I just thought that it was the easiest and then I went ahead and put it onto a platter and I'm gonna end up putting that back into the oven to just keep it warm. Um, but the ham is already sliced, so this is a spiral cut ham. So basically all you have to do is make vertical cuts down and then there are still some solid pieces of ham in there that you can kind of slice those up as well. Um, but this definitely makes plenty enough to feed a crowd. I think we had like nine people and it was definitely more than enough with leftovers. I always like to have leftovers anyway, so I can make ham salad and things like that. But you can see I'm just taking the juices from the bottom of the pan with a, um, a baster and adding those to the top of the ham. I'll cover it with foil and just put it in an oven to keep it warm until we eat. And here are the rolls. Those turned out so, so good, obviously super easy i recommend these roads rolls to anyone because they are really foolproof and they taste homemade so i just like to brush those with melted butter when they come out of the oven that is definitely optional but i highly recommend it okay so here's how my little dessert board turned out i added some little peep containers that i had in my stash to there i thought those turned out so cute i added some little bunny ears to the cupcakes then i have some uh, bunny cups and plates. I think I got these at Target a couple years ago and I thought they would just be super fun to sit out. So I'll show you guys what we ended up with. Here is the ham that turned out so delicious. We also have the green bean casserole. That was a big hit. Uh, the carrots turned out really well. Chicken and noodles, those are always a hit and we have tons of leftovers. The rolls, those always go really quick too. Adam's mom brought doubled eggs and Adam's aunt brought some cherry fluff and some chips. And so we definitely had enough food. It was delicious. Okay, so now I need to clean up after dinner, Easter dinner. Uh, we kind of had just like a mishmash of stuff for for supper that night since we ate Easter dinner at noon. We had like, I don't know, I made some BLTs and um, I think Kira had mac and cheese or something like that. Had some leftovers. It was all good. Um, but I still had some extra produce to process. So this is some celery that I needed to get washed up. I like to actually just soak my celery in really cold water for a while um, because I feel like it crisps it back up. And sometimes I even store it in water in the fridge. I know that sounds weird, but it really does keep it fresh. And then I needed to clean out my other produce drawer. I know I'm doing things on different days, but I just had to do things when I <laughs> had time this weekend. So I'm just gonna spray and wipe that out. And then again, here's one of those bins that I got to fit in my uh, produce drawers. So I'm gonna empty my cucumbers into there. I had a zucchini and another cucumber. Uh, another reason why I kind of like doing this every once in a while is just to see what I have, make sure I use it all up. This is actually a container uh, from Bideam, which I really, really like. I might order some more. Um, it's really convenient to keep prepped produce like this in the fridge because you can see it. And I always find that when we can see things, we use them a lot better. And then it has one of those lids that um, pushes down on the top, like with a little button. I think that's cute too, or cool, whatever. <laughs> and then I had some cauliflower that I wanted to get cut up. I'm probably gonna make that into a cauliflower bake some night this week, maybe with that tri-tip. Um, that Adam got at the meat shop, but normally I just cut the core out of this and then I cut it into florets. I cut off any sort of yucky parts and then um, wash it up in the salad spinner. Just soak it in really cold water, get it really clean. And then um, I had some miscellaneous items that I wanted to get into this fridge bin that is in my fridge. Some different snacks and Lunchables and yogurts and things like that for the kids lunches to make that easy this week. So for the cauliflower, I'm actually gonna use one of these um, produce keepers, mostly because I was out of, <laughs> of Ziploc bags, um, but these work really well anyway because it helps 
um, kind of ventilate for the vegetables and they don't get mushy or slimy in there. Okay, so I'm gonna use my food saver to um, vacuum seal up some of the leftover ham. This is actually the bone from the ham that we had today. And I always save my ham bone because it's really good to either make ham and beans with, or I have also made a potato soup with it before. I just take the ham bone and put it into the um, instant pot with some water and some onions and whatever and cook it up and it makes a really delicious broth that you can make potato soup out of and then you can even have like the little chunks of ham in it too it's really really good so i'm just going to write what it is on that always write on your bags what you're putting <laughs> into your freezer or you will never remember um, okay so this is the rest of the ham that i had from today so basically i'm just going to dice this up and put it into a container i am going to cut off most of the fat because um, i'm probably going to end up using this ham for either soups or like eggs omelets um, actually i am going to use some of it for salads like cob salads this coming week you can use diced up ham for a lot of things that's why i didn't mind you know cooking a couple of them this week one because i can share with family and two because it makes delicious leftovers in fact i have some leftover in the fridge i think i might make ham salad out of that which have you guys do you have you guys had ham salad every time i make that on my channel people are like what is that that is gross that is weird um i mean i would put to you that it's basically just like chicken salad or tuna salad except you use ground up ham <laughs> instead of chicken or tuna it's really delicious i can remember my grandma making it when i was a kid except she had like a hand crank grinder that she clamped onto the edge of the counter and made it like that um, but i'm just going to put about two cups of ham into each of these bags i am going to use my food saver because i am going to freeze these and i always find that that helps with the um, freezer burn so i decided to do that as well so these are actually food saver bags that have a zipper at the top of them and I just chopped that part off and discarded it and then used it as a regular food saver bag um, just because that's how I wanted to <laughs> do it. I'm trying to kind of use up what I have uh, in my house, but I would definitely recommend um, a vacuum sealer if you don't have one. I think that they are great in terms of uh, preserving food and I even have some containers actually that I might um, show you guys that are specifically made to go with the food saver that you can use to even just refrigerate things after you take the air out of them which I think um, might be helpful for preserving some items in the fridge as well Okay, so it's only the 18th load of dishes that I've done this weekend. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was tired after this weekend. Um, I don't really know the last time, actually I lied. Uh, I was gonna say, I don't know the last time I've had a weekend where I've just kind of sat and done nothing, but actually Adam and I did go to a, uh, a cabin uh, last weekend and for two days we sat and we watched Netflix and we did nothing. I didn't bring my computer with me. It was glorious. Um, I kind of felt like I needed that even after we went on vacation to um, Orlando we went to Universal in March when the kids had their spring break it's probably been about a month now and I don't know why but I just didn't really feel like it was a vacation I mean like obviously it was a vacation and that we went somewhere and we didn't have to work but I just felt I feel like the whole amusement park thing is just not relaxing like I don't really feel like it's a good relaxing vacation for me i don't know what do you guys think i feel like if we do it next time maybe we'll just go to the parks for like two days and then we'll also have two days to just like relax at the pool um i don't know i just i didn't feel like it was that relaxing i sort of felt like it was a working vacation <laughs> i don't know i don't know but uh anyway uh here i am cleaning my stove because i cannot cook noodles without boiling them over and making a mess of my stove so i'm using my beloved crud cutter spray i haven't used that in a while and i'm just gonna use a hot rag to wipe off the top of the stove so that worked pretty well um, yeah, but I don't know. I feel like I am workaholic. I don't feel like I am. I know that I, <laughs> I know that I am and I really need to, sometimes I feel like get a hold of that. Um, in fact, I really want to actively kind of reduce the number of hours that I'm working, 
um, on my YouTube channel in addition to my regular job because I just don't really feel like the pace that I'm going at right now is sustainable. I mean, you can do anything for a while, right? I kind of compare it to like when I was in grad school. I did that for three years, but at the end of it, I was like, whoop, I'm done. <laughs> like you're, you're just nearing the end of, of the burnout stage. So yeah, I don't know. I just need to find something that is sustainable. I think my plan really going forward is to, um, post videos three times a week. I think that is a pretty uh, sustainable cadence for me. I feel like working full time much more than that. I just can't keep up with it. Now, of course, if there are special times like Vlogist or Vlogmas or something like that, when I post a video every day, then that's a little bit different. And I can even kind of prepare for that in some aspects. Um, but like just normally, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm only gonna hold myself to like three videos per week, um, maybe two some weeks, just depending on what I have going on. Um, because for so long, I feel like I really have pressured myself to just post so many videos like as much as I can. And while that's something I would really like to do, I also have to be realistic and I'm not going to quit my job to do YouTube. I love my job and I've worked really hard at it and I um, I'm really proud of it and I would not sacrifice that <laughs> for social media. So I just feel like I really have to kind of find a cadence that's a little bit more sustainable for me. All right, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Here is my organized refrigerator. I mean, it's not Pinterest worthy, but it's a lot better than it was. And at least I know that everything in my produce drawers are uh, good to go and not rotten. And I can feel better for the rest of the week about having everything prepped and ready to go. Uh, you also saw me putting some cinnamon rolls out there to thaw for breakfast the next morning. I'm trying to use a bunch of things that I have in my freezer. And I thought I would show this to you because I thought it was funny. Connor uh, had half of his chocolate bunny that he had in his Easter basket. And he asked me to label it. And then he wanted the marker and he wrote, do not steal on the chocolate bunny. So just to make sure no one took his chocolate bunny. <laughs> Okay, so here is my clean kitchen at the end of the night. I mean, again, not Pinterest worthy, but better than nothing. So thank you guys for coming along with me on today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it and you got some inspiration to get things done uh, for your own household. Don't forget to check out Bydeem. I have a code for 13% off your order. You can check that out in the link down below. Thanks so much for being here and I will see you in my next video. Bye.